it's time for supper and I've been thinking about what can I make that's gonna be simple and easy use up these rotisserie chickens that I have purchased at Costco earlier this week I have done a really good job of having this rotisserie chicken meal week and it has been working out really good so I think you saw some of those videos last time but tonight I'm going to use the rotisserie chicken in a new and unique kind of way so I'm sort of just making things up as I go today so if it turns out really bad that's why because I don't have a I don't have a recipe I'm going by I'm just sort of thinking that this might be good and it might be great and it might be a disaster I don't know but we'll just see we'll learn together I've got some bacon that I'm gonna fry up in the pan I've got some kale some cabbage I'm going to chop up I have this rotisserie chicken and some almonds and cranberries. So I'm gonna put all of that together with a poppy seed dressing that I found at Aldi. And we're gonna try to have a nice, yummy fall salad that tastes delicious and takes hardly no time to put together. So I'm gonna hope for the best. This might be just the best new viral salad video ever. So we shall see. This head of cabbage that I got at Aldi this week if you would prefer to skip this step you can just get a bag of coleslaw mix it will have the carrots in it as well and maybe even some other varieties of cabbage which might add a little bit of nutrition and flavor I would just prefer to have the whole cabbage and me process it myself that way I know that it's fresh and we can have a little more cabbage in our salad. But if I was in a hurry, I would totally just get a bag of coleslaw mix already chopped up. I'm just going to slice this and then cube it into small little chunks. We're going for like bite sized pieces. I'm just going to go ahead and put everything in this large bowl. Seems like it will be a good size for me to mix everything in. Also, if I wasn't quite so averse to having a big food processor take up all of the room in my sink and dishwasher, I would use that. But to me, it's just easier sometimes just to get out the cutting board and the knife. But shredding it or chopping it in your food processor is also a really good way to prepare this. And that has made a lot of cabbage chopped up. I think what I'm going to do is take out half of this and save it for another recipe because I don't think we need this much cabbage in our salad. Now that I have my cabbage chopped up, I'm going to chop up the breast of the rotisserie chicken. That's my family's favorite part. So normally I will just keep the legs and thighs and wings for more casserole type dishes and put the breast meat in recipes where the chicken is more visible and sort of standalone. I just really can't get over what a great value this rotisserie chicken is. Either from Sam's or Costco, I'm pretty sure they're both still under $5 for an entire already cooked, processed, meat and it just I think it's one of the best options available so if you like I had been until this year if you are have been sleeping on the rotisserie chickens this might be the time to give them a try sometimes they'll come out nice and clean and perfect and make you look like you know what you're doing and then sometimes you just sort of tear at it until you get all of the meat off <laughs> which is apparently the approach I'm taking today. Never ever ever throw your bones away. Put it in some water. Cook it in your slow cooker or in your instant pot. Let that cook for several hours. You will have some delicious homemade chicken broth for absolutely no cost. Okay now I'm just gonna this is already so sort of hacked up. I'm gonna just 
dice it as well as I can. I went ahead and added both of these breasts. If I was looking to really, really stretch this meat, I would add one breast to this meal and save the other for tomorrow's meal. Um, but I'm not trying to do that, actually. I'm trying to add more protein to our meals. Chris was diagnosed earlier this year with um, a liver disease, and so we're really trying to fight through that, get him back on the road to health and recovery. And one way to do that is to give him as much protein as I can. So that's why I'm gonna boost this salad up with all of this chicken. Okay, this is what we've gotten so far. Now I'm going to check on my bacon and then start working on incorporating the rest of the ingredients. Okay, next up I'm gonna add some of this chopped kale. Kale is pretty much a superfood and it is really good to add to any meal, but this kale is gonna pair well with the cabbage. I do see that even though it's chopped, I'm gonna need to chop it a little finer. So I've gotta get my cutting board back out here. Probably just a couple of handfuls will be plenty. I know this is sort of gonna be a meal that is gonna be really iffy with my family. I know one of my daughters will be all about it and will love it. The other one, probably will struggle through this meal. Lane, I'm not even sure if he will even try it. He's pretty good at trying things, but I mean, it's not uncommon for him to say it's yucky and spit it out. But if I can just get them to try it, that to me is a win. I try not to push food, like make people clean their plates or anything like that. But I do want to provide a variety of food for my family. A variety of food will bring a lot of extra nutrients and value to your to your diet. But if you stick with the same thing all the time, you're gonna you're gonna lack something in the nutrient department. So this is an opportunity for me to bring a little bit of new flavors to the table without it being like scary or overwhelming. So hopefully everybody will at least give this a try. Okay, I'm gonna add, that's half a cup. I think I'm gonna add one whole cup of cranberries. Cranberries are actually another superfood, although when you buy them like this, they are going to have a good bit of sugar added, which is unfortunate and I wish it wasn't that way, but it will make it more palatable to the people who are not interested in eating kale and cabbage. So maybe I can win someone over with the cranberries. And then I'm also going to add one cup of blanched almonds. You can just use whatever almonds you have. I don't even know what blanched means, but anyway, we're gonna go with it there. Now it's time for me to chop up my bacon. This is about half a pound of bacon. You can also use bacon bits. I do not like bacon bits. I don't know what it is. They just do not taste real to me. They taste sort of artificial and I don't, I don't know. I just don't like them. I would rather do without than to eat bacon bits. That's not any kind of comment about the, the value of them. It's just my preference. So if I'm gonna have bacon, I'm gonna have real bacon and just take this extra step to cook it and chop it up. But this recipe will work just fine if you have like the little bacon bits in a bag. No judgment here. Okay, I'm gonna add all of that bacon. Now I'm gonna attempt to stir all of this together without spilling it everywhere. Before I do that, I do wanna say this is the dressing that I'm gonna use on this salad. You can make your own poppy seed dressing or any other kind of dressing, really. I know that like an onion-based vinaigrette would also taste pretty good on this salad, um, but I just sort of felt like the sweetness of this poppy seed dressing would taste really good on this, but I'm not gonna add it now because I'm just going to allow everyone to put the amount that they want instead of me adding too much or too little at this point in the process. 
but I do feel like this salad has turned out to be really one of the prettiest salads I have ever made. I'm really excited about tasting it to see how all of these flavors go together. really happy with the way the salad turned out and my family surprised me with how much they enjoyed it as well so make sure you give this one a try it's time for me to make supper tonight i'm going to make a tortellini soup this is something i've never really made before i try to shy away from pre-packaged ingredients as much as i can so this is going a little bit outside of my normal and outside my comfort zone but because i don't really know how to make tortellini yet because i don't know how to make my own pasta i'm going to use a store-bought ingredient to make this soup as i grow my knowledge and understanding and comfort level about different ingredients including pasta i can change this over to a homemade ingredient but for now i'm going to use store-bought tortellini i'm going to make my own sausage because it was just a little bit more to buy the higher quality pork and make my own sausage so i'm going to add a couple of seasonings and spices to this pork start cooking and then i will put all of the soup together you can just use regular breakfast sausage instead of this pork i'm just going to put some seasonings in in this ground pork to make it a little bit closer to the flavor of breakfast sausage. So I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit of sage and just a little of garlic powder. I'll cook all of this together until it's good and browned and then we'll put our soup ingredients together. This was a really good substitution because I've not done anything to this except cook it and add some seasoning. And there is so little fat in the bottom. I don't have to drain it. Normally, if I was to buy the store-bought sausage, I would have to drain it first, but I'm not going to have to do that now. So, I'm just going to begin by adding my other ingredients. I need four cups of chicken broth, two cans, regular size 14 ounce cans of diced tomatoes, and I have cubed up one block of cream cheese. I'm gonna give that a stir, and I'm just gonna cook this on medium heat until the cream cheese is all nice and dissolved. I have been stirring the soup for about five or six minutes. All of the cream cheese is dissolved. Now it's time for me to add my last two ingredients. Again, I've got this ravioli. I called it tortellini earlier. I don't even know what that means, so there might be a difference. But anyway, I'm gonna pour all of this in. And also, I've got some spinach that has been in the freezer. I'm gonna add that to the soup. I'll probably add about three cups of spinach. And now, I'm gonna stir all of this together. The ravioli needs to cook for probably eight minutes or so. And then after that, everything will be done and it will be time to eat. So this has been a really easy dinner to put together. I'm hoping that this is going to be one of our new fall favorites. Also, be sure to let me know what your favorite fall recipes are. Always good to have everybody contribute some to the recipe books so that we can all have new and exciting recipes each season. So I'm excited to try this one. Let me know what fall recipes you're excited to try too. Okay, the pasta is cooked up. I think it's all done and ready to eat. So I'm gonna put it in a bowl and get ready for dinner. This soup recipe certainly did not disappoint. I'll be sure to leave the recipe down below so you can give it a try as well. Thanks for watching. I love you and I will see you again next time.